Alright guys, how's it going? I've had a request to do a key binds video, uh, especially for mouse and keyboard users like myself. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. If, if, if you're using the joystick, there may be one or two things in here that you would like to use on the keyboard anyway, so it may be well worth watching at least. Uh, first thing I want to do, however, is go into options, controls, and right. Up here presets, you've got a bunch of stuff, yeah, depending on what's plugged in, I think, yeah. So if you've got a joystick plugged in, you'll have a preset for that as well, and a controller, etc. Right? One of the problems is, as soon as you change anything, it, it you know, the preset becomes custom, right? I'll just show you that, right? So I, I might keep keyboard and mouse. As soon as I, like, do anything, the preset goes to custom. So if I now apply that, that will overwrite my custom. And the custom will always be, you know, as the one that you're using. I mean, that's fine so long as you're not, you know, you don't want to tr lose whatever you had that was good good before if you want to try out something new, right? So just in case, you know, you have got your good settings, but you'd like to mess around with it, uh, this is how you can save this custom setting, right? So what you do is, click on your start menu, and click in the search bar, and start typing in, start with a percentage key, Local app data. Finish with a percentage key. Right. Don't don't press enter or anything, right? You've got a bunch of stuff here. Local, 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 local. I don't know why local shown twice, but just cl click on the top one if you've got that as well. Yeah. Right. Now, opens up this area in your, uh, this directory in your, your hard drive. Uh, you're looking for Frontier Developments. Now, now, there should be two here. You want the top one, the one that doesn't have the little dash between. Now, double click on... You want to double click on that. You want to double click on that. Double click on Elite Dangerous, then double click on Options, and then double click on Bindings. Right. And here you are. You've got this custom binds file here, which is the exact same thing. This is what this custom thing here is coming off of. Right. Now, if you right click on this, Highlight it, right click on it, and select copy. Now click off it, right click and select paste. You've now got a direct copy of this, this binds file. All you want to do now is click on it once until you know this comes up and yeah, until this comes up. Mouse over that and change the name to something like uh, best settings. Right? Now you can close this window. Now, it will show up here, but you can't see it yet. What you need to do is click on cancel. You go back into controls. And then when you click up here, you've now got best settings, right? So it's going to be exactly the same as what the custom file is. The difference is you can now change the custom file. You can mess around with anything. You will always be able to come back to your best settings file if you want. So that will come in handy, hopefully. Right, so I guess the best way to do this is to start with a completely empty slate, right? So, if you just, now that you've got your best settings saved, hopefully, yeah, if you just click on empty, everything gets empty, right? So, we'll start off with the mouse controls. You've got your mouse X axis, which can only be, well, it can be off or roll and yaw. If you're using the mouse, obviously, it can only be, it's got to be roll or yaw. Now, I prefer roll. Quite a lot of people prefer yaw. Uh, so this is really one-off preference, which is probably why you've got the option, right? Now, if I just put it to roll, yeah? Now, you see, left rolls me to the left. Now, first thing I need to do, right? Because that wasn't quite wor working properly. Now, show my mouse widget. I want to put that to on, right? Because you couldn't see my mouse widget there. There is some other option down here a bit that I want to get rid of. That's your into roll down at flight rotation. You want to turn that off for now because that's just confusing. Right. So, we'll apply again. Right. Now, if I move left, if I move right, you can see me moving left and right. And depending on how, fa how you know, dark... How far from the middle I move, how dark or how light my uh, cursor is, that depends on how fast I move. Very jerky for some reason. I'm not getting very good recording quality. Uh, 
quite sure what's up with that. Right, anyway. That's roll, which I prefer. Now, yaw is more of a sort of classic move to the left, move to the right. Depending on what you've got in your mouse, the opposite is going to be on the keyboard, yeah? So, if you want to your left and your right, go ahead and do that. This relative mouse X axis, we're going to ignore it. Suffice it to say, you want it to off, yeah? Now, the Y axis, you've got a choice of pitch or pitch inverted. Pitch is pretty simple. You move up, you go up. You move down, you go down, yeah? Or you can invert it so that up puts you down and uh, down puts you up, yeah? Just basically whatever you prefer. The same for this uh, relative mouse X axis, uh, Y axis, you do not want this on. Uh, basically speaking, if it's on and you move up, it will automatically center you, yeah? So if you want to keep moving in one direction, you need to constantly pick up and, you know, swipe the mouse in that same direction over and over. It, it, you just can't do it. Right, now, all of these sensitivity options, I already went over that in a previous video. You can check my mouse sensitivity video if you're having trouble with that. I'm not going to go into it here again. Uh, mouse head look is on. You might think that doesn't make much sense to have a head look on the mouse as well, right? So basically what that means is, you know what, I can look around using the mouse. You, obviously, you can't look around and fly at the same time using the mouse, but you, you, you can, you know, toggle between them. Now, I keep that to on. Uh, this invert thing is exact same as pitch and pitch inverted, yeah? Uh, so if you want to move, you know, if you want to look up by moving the mouse down, you invert that. Sensitivity is pretty obvious, and the mouse widget is a little triangle thing that you see, yeah? You can either have it off or on. I prefer to have it on because it just gives me an extra little indicator of, you know, how, how strong I'm turning and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to come back, though, to the mouse head look, right? Now, if you scroll all the way down... mode switches, right? You've got a head look. Now, I use my mouse button 3, which is the scroll mouse. Yeah, the, the button on the scroll wheel. Uh, and you've got a, a choice of modes here between toggle and hold. Toggle, I think, makes the sense in most of these things. Right, so, but I'll, I'll just show you that now. Right, so, I can basically, you know, look around simply by Clicking on my scroll wheel, and as soon as I click it again, it centers back to, you know, the center of the screen. I wouldn't use this in combat because, obviously, I can't fly at the same time. If you're using, like, proper head tracking software, that'd be absolutely great. I don't have it yet. I may get it, but I don't have it yet. Um, so, this is really only useful for, you know, admiring the view while you're in super cruise, moving towards planets, that sort of thing. In combat... It's, it's not, you know, you, you can't really use it. You've either got the head look for that or, or, or you don't have, or, you know, the, the head tracking software, uh, or you really, you're, you're just not really going to use this during like, dog fights. Right, so the only other things to cover that you definitely want on the mouse would be weapons. You've got, you basically got two fire, two, two things you can fire, yeah, your primary and your secondary. You want your primary fire to mouse one, which is your left mouse, uh, or if you're left-handed, it'll be the opposite, obviously, and your secondary fire to the right mouse. So lasers, cannons type of thing, lasers and missiles, pretty obvious, yeah. Right, now, like I said, you know, everybody should have a scroll wheel by now, uh, unless it's like 1980. So what you're looking for is to scroll down to your flight throttle. Now, I, I didn't use this to start with, but for increased throttle and decreased throttle, I like to increase throttle with scroll wheel up and to decrease my throttle with the scroll wheel down. Right. You kind of lack really fine control doing it this way. However, with so many controls, this is what I basically found to be the best. I just had to sacrifice the fine control on the mouse for, for the throttle. Uh, I'll explain what I mean with that in a second. Now, you've got this throttle increments here, which is at continuous, right? Now, if I click apply, 
and I try to throw it forward. You see how I'm five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's so slow. You can't. I'm I'm scrolling forward on on my scroll wheel, yeah. But that's how slowly it's going. Uh, and if I do it back at the same, I mean, I am constantly scrolling in this, and it's just way too slow. So what you need to do is change your throttle increments. No, that's not it. Now, what I use is 12.5%. You can choose any of these. Uh, obviously, the bigger increment, the, you know, the less you need to scroll in order to get that. However, you lose even more fine control. In reality, I should probably be using 10%, but I'm using 12.5%, and I'll just show you what that does. Yeah, so there you see. I mean, 12.5%, that means twice should be 25%, yeah? For some reason, it doesn't it doesn't always seem to do that, but 25 sorry 12.5 percent works pretty well for me. You can you can maintain the blue zone while, while you know speeding up and down as long as you start off in the center. Yeah, you can sort of stay in the blue zone with little changes. If you find it 10 percent is better for you, or if you find it 25 percent is better for you, then you go with whatever you know whatever you think is right for you. Right, so you basically have three ways of m moving left and right. Uh, you've got your... I'm going to change this to roll because that's what I use. Yeah, you've got your roll, you've got your yaw, and you've got thrusters. Yeah. Uh, this is where it starts to get a bit difficult. Yeah. Now, like I said, I'm going with roll on my uh, X mouse axis, which means for your left and your right, I'm going to go with A. And your right will be D. Now, the reason for this, uh, if I just switch to my third screen, right, a little keyboard here, right? Now, the classic WASD, this is, you know, for God knows how long this is what it's been, you know, W to move forward, A for left, D for right, S for backward. Most of you will be well aware of these keys, yeah, and, and everything all around it is basically what you add, add for keybinds as you get better at, at you know, being a keybinder. Uh, I'm an MMO player, so I mean I, I can use half a keyboard quite easily, uh, and I've been doing it for for many years. Uh, but you know your classic start W for for forward, S for backward, A for left, D for right. So A is your left for me, D is your right. Right now you've also got thrust left. If I can get this to work, we've done roll and we've done um, yaw, yeah. But we've also got flight thrust, thrust left and thrust right. Now, I set these to Q and E. Thrust left to Q, thrust right to E. Now, if I switch back to my keyboard, it would be pretty obvious why, yeah? Q above A and E is above D. Now, depending on whatever keyboard you're using, yeah, obviously I'm using a UK uh, keyboard. Um, Whatever's above, you know, these keys then, these make pretty good thruster keys, yeah? Because it's fairly similar movement. Uh, and it makes, it basically just makes sense to use those. Now, if I apply that, go back to Elite, and apply. You can see now I've got my roll to my left, roll to my right, uh, I can yaw, left and right, and I can also now, if I hold down Q, it looks like nothing's happening, but then you see the little specks flying past, yeah? And you can see also by my speed indicator that I am travelling in some direction at 192. That is directly left at 192 metres per second. Now, if I hold down my E key, I thrust to the right, you see the little specks fly past in the opposite direction, not really easy to tell because I'm not moving forward, but if I was moving forward, you know, you would, you would get some kind of idea of movement in those directions as well, as long as there's something, you know, to target against. It's, it's not like the yaw, uh, which appears to, you know, move much further, but in reality, you're just sort of pointing your nose when you're yawing, yeah? <laughs> you're not actually moving to the left or to the right uh, as much. Now, when I first started learning to play the game, I was using uh, my... My flight throttle at A and uh, sorry at W and S. And if you remember, uh, W S is basically your up and down or your forward backward type thing. Uh, 
on the keyboard. But eventually I decided that flight thrust up and down was better. Up at A, sorry, up at W and down at S. Uh, this is, I especially noticed this when I first went into the Eagle and I really started to realise how good thrusters were for thrusting around objects. If you've watched my videos, you see me doing it all the time. Uh, where I just hold down like my, my downward thrust uh, while I, I sort of move my, my my flight throttle up and down depending you know on what speed I want try and keep it in the blue zone while thrusting around something uh, you notice that I'll pitch the nose up while, while I thrust downwards and that lets me keep it in, in, its, in my sights yeah while, while I can fire and, and thrust around it so W and S for me are better at thrust up and thrust down and that was also why, I, you know, I did finally decide on, I, I wanted the, uh, I wanted my throttle on my scroll wheel instead, on my, on my mouse instead of on my keyboard. Because that's basically all the really good keys gone, you know, your WASD has basically gone uh, for, for me for your left and right and for thrust up and down. You can't really see thrust up and down. You can see the HUD moving, but you you would know if I was you know dog fighting against some other ship, you would see it moving slightly, or I would start thrusting up and down below it. Right, so that basically covers it for in terms of you know your, your movement while while you're flying. Yeah, you've you've covered basically everything there. The only thing I haven't done is under flight thrust, you've got thrust forward and thrust backward. Now. This is sort of the same as your flight throttle forward and backward, except you get far more fine control. Now, these default to thrust forward as R and thrust backward as F. I find those pretty difficult keys to use, especially when you're trying to yaw left at the same time and you're trying to thrust left or something like that. You know, if you're really good with your fingers, then you can maybe do all this. Uh, this is a slight weakness in my game, uh, I believe. However, I make do by using my throttle on my scroll wheel instead of using thrust forward and thrust backward. That's probably why I'm not awfully accurate or not super, you know, I'm not awesome at, you know, getting really close to some of the ships. If you watch some of the really good guys like Isonona, eh, he, he's, he'll be able to get within a couple of meters of a ship or anybody using a joystick who's pretty good should be able to do that and hold it. Um, if you're using thrust forward and thrust backward, you can do that as well. You'd be rapidly tapping the keys while maintaining like the blue zone. Uh, as it is, I can only move twelve and a half percent increments. Yeah, so I'll be constantly trying to you know back and forward with that. It's up to you if you want to master this or not. You can certainly get by without it uh, because basically any any of the videos you've watched with me, I have not been using thrust forward and thrust backward hardly at all. Right, so. Let's have a look at the other really important stuff that is needed. Engine boost. You'll be pressing this more times than probably anything else. Spacebar is the key for it. Now, it defaults to tab. Uh, when I tried it at tab, for some reason I just kept on boosting inside stations. <laughs> so I got rid of it, I started using my spacebar. You're going to press it an awful lot, it's a big key, your thumb's probably going to be resting on it. Yeah, It's one of your most important abilities, so spacebar for me is the key for engine boost. Um, I'm going to ignore all this stuff just now. Right. Uh, after that, I would say... Coming down to miscellaneous, and you've got your power distributor stuff. Now, outside of your, uh, if I switch to my third screen, outside of your WASD QE keys, yeah, you're then thinking around about your 1, 2, 3, 4, your ZXCs. So they're getting progressively harder uh, or progressively more difficult to, you know, to get your muscle memory and your fingers, you know, sorted out with. However, one, two, three, four. These are all still pretty good and easy keys to press for for anybody. I would I would assume, yeah. So, what I do is go back to the game. Divert power to engines. One. Divert power to weapons. Even though it's second tier, I put to three. Divert power to systems is two, and balance your power distribution to four. Now, I believe it defaults to. 
engines is up arrow. Was it weapons was right? Systems left, balance down. I think. Ugh, didn't mean to do that. To fix that again. Right. Now that's okay. Yeah, I mean this makes sense, right? If you look at it in the actual game. If you look down at your power distributor, you can see that, you know, your engines is slightly up higher than your systems, which is to the left, the weapons is to the right. So that makes sense looking at the, the arrow keys, yeah? And your reset is below engines. So, you know, up, up, up for your engines, left for systems, right for weapons. Makes great sense. The biggest problem with that is these are way too important to be taking your hands off your mouse or, or, or your keyboard in order to use. You, you know, you should be flying around one, two, three, all the time sort of thing, depending on when you need it, yeah? If you're doing that, I mean, you can't do that while they're at those arrow keys, yeah? Uh, you just can't do it unless you've got three hands. Uh, so, I prefer one to engines, two to systems, three to weapons, and four to, to reset. If you prefer maybe, as you're looking at it, you know, you would go like, one would be systems instead, yeah? Because one's the first one. Two would be engines in this case. I did try that for a little while, but in the end, I figured out that I preferred one at engines, two at systems, three at weapons, and four to reset it back to back to the uh, the normal. But those are actually so important; they have got to be right. In the, they've got to be at your left hand, yeah, right at your fingertips, because you're going to be using them a lot in in dog fighting. That should basically have covered. Just about everything you need to fly, fire the ship, and uh, you know, fix your boost and stuff like that, and your power distributor. Um, there's one or two other things that you're going to need as well. And there's some things that you don't need, however, they're going to be a big help to you in the long run. Um, so let's cover some of those. Disable flight assist. This is a pretty advanced uh, maneuver. But it's one you are likely going to use eventually. If you know, if you're getting this deep, deeply into the key binding and stuff and dogfighting, you're going to want to be able to disable flight assist eventually. Now, I put that to my Z key. Um, if you look at the screen, look at the keyboard. A lot of people have trouble with this, I believe. Z, X, Z and X, especially Z. Now, I think my thumb kind of quite bendy, so I don't have any problem you know, getting to Z with that. In fact, quite often, uh, if, my, if my thumb isn't resting on spacebar, it'll be resting on Z. Uh, just the way I hold my hand. Um, if you find that you can't use that, if, or your thumb can't quite get back to Z, then you're going to have to think about what you want to do with flight assist. But you can deal with that once you've actually got to that stage uh, where, where you're using flight assist a lot. Uh, right, but as I say, mine's is at Z for that. You also want to switch between hold or toggle. Yeah? Defaults to hold, I would strongly recommend toggle because uh, the last thing you really want to be doing is holding down a key while you're trying to you know, move elsewhere. Uh, just, rem just remember to switch it back you know, to, to enable flight assist again or you're going to crash into something, I guarantee it. Right, now another one, select target ahead. There are a few ways to target ships, right? Uh -uh. When I first started off, I used my mouse 5, which is my mouse thumb button. I've got two thumb buttons at my mouse, uh, mouse 4 and mouse 5. Uh, 5 is my pref preferable one to press, yeah? I, I sort of regret this because mouse 5 is far too good a button to be wasting on something like select target ahead. But this is what I use. Uh, the, reason, the reason I dislike it is because... There are other ways to target ships, yeah? Like cycle next ship and cycle previous ship. Um, and I find myself using cycle next ship in order to do the same thing. If you think about it, right, when you get interdicted or if... Yeah, normally, normally you're getting interdicted or you interdict somebody, right? You pull them out of super cruise and you go into, you know, your own instance containing you and them, right? So all you need to do is actually have a key for cycle next ship. Right, now that looks like a, what is it? That's the, the dot, the period on the keyboard, right? Cycle previous ship would be my comma. The reason I use those is because, let's have a look at this keyboard again. Now you can't actually see it here, yeah, but th these two keys here, however, they have also got a lesser than and a greater than uh, 
symbol on them on on the UK keyboard. So I, th- I think about this as you know cycling left and cycling right. You could also use left and right on. Uh, your left and right arrows. There's no reason not to, in fact, because you're no longer using those for your power distributor, right? So let's actually go back and do that. Right? So cycle next shift would be right arrow. Cycle previous shift would be left arrow. Right? So anytime you interdict somebody or you get interdicted, all you really need to do is hit left or right arrow and you will automatically target them. You don't need to try and target them ahead, yeah? using the mouse 5 button, which means that the mouse 5 button could then be used for something a lot better. As it stands though, I have I have kept my mouse 5 button for selecting target ahead. It comes in useful when you're fighting those war zones and you've got 20 ships flying around and you quickly need to target something ahead, then you know that mouse 5 comes in useful. So it's not a total waste, I just feel that maybe I should have had something better. If you want to try it out though, Go ahead and use left and right arrow for cycle next ship and cycle previous ship. Right now, there's another one: cycle next subsystem, cycle previous subsystem. Now, I use tab, right, and I just think about it as tabbing through the subsystems. This is more important if you're a pirate, right? Because let's say that you're you're interdicting somebody. You could uh, first thing you do is you know target them ahead and then press tab and you will select their cargo hatch. So that's this is what the subsystem means, yeah? So that the cargo hatches, it's their weapons and stuff like that. So if you've got a good key for just doing that, you'll automatically target their, their cargo hatch first or you can tab through it until you find the system you want. Now, there is another way of doing this um, which you can do to sort of set up. It's almost like a macro if you like, but imagine like you had uh, three keys together on your keyboard, like one, two, and three on your keypad, yeah? Instead of using, like, these cycle next ship things I've got here, let's say I use one on my numpad to cycle the next ship, yeah? I could then put two to cycle the next subsystem on that ship, yeah? So on my number pad, I'm just pressing one, two, and I am automatically, as soon as I interdict any target, I've got it selected, I've got its uh, cargo hatch tabbed, just like that. Uh, nice and easy, one, two, on, on, on my number pad. Or you could do up and down on the, up and down on your uh, your arrow keys, if, if that's what you want. That's a little bit more advanced, but these are just things that you know you might want to start thinking about. So this is starting to get a bit longer than I had intended, again, like most of my videos. Uh, so I'm just going to go over the, you know, the other important combat stuff. Um, Use shield cell, mouse 4, I have that at, uh, and my chaff launcher is C on my keyboard. Um, C is pretty easy to press, shield cell, mouse 4, these two are very important for combat. Uh, they're pretty easy at C and mouse 4 to use. Um, I should probably have had chaff launcher at mouse 5 or something, had I been using those at the start. But this is what I've opted for now. If you want to start cha- chaff launcher at 5 and shield cell at 4, then that's maybe not a bad idea, yeah? Um, it will mean that you're going to have to have a different target head button, though. Uh, all this stuff like your panels, you want, the first thing you want to do is UI focus mode. Switch to toggle, target panel, F1 to the left, F2 to the right. Simple as that. Um, your comms panel can be enter or return or something on your keyboard. Now, two important ones are Silent running should already be delete on default to delete, yeah. And I, I use deploy heat sink at backspace. Now, uh, where are we? All your super cruise stuff. J K L, yeah. That's what I use for those. Uh, but I'm trying to find my uh, the important ones, which are. Right, your set speed thing. You need a set speed to zero. You've got to have this one, right? And it defaults to X, and that's what I use. Yeah, so when you come into land, you set speed to zero. When you're jumping into hyperspace, set speed to zero. You can use it in combat as well. Uh, next one, set speed to 75%. If you watched my early videos, you know that it's a key for when you approach a, like an orbital or something like that, or one of the unidentified signal sources. Target ahead, set speed to 75%. Um, 
if I have a look at my third screen, you can see here, that's the key I'm using right next to my one key. Yeah. Now, you might also think about using up or down arrow for that. Yes. You could have even have set speed to zero could be your down arrow if that's all you want. I just prefer it at X because it's it's a good, you know, X is X is a pretty good one for me and I use set speed to zero a lot. Set speed to 75% right next to my one key. So those are, those are pretty easy as well. Right. I think that pretty much covers it. Let's just have a quick look through uh, if I've missed anything. It doesn't look like anything missed there. Right, select highest threats. This can sometimes come in useful, right? It defaults to H. I keep it at H, right? So let's say you're fighting two targets and you've got one selected ahead and, you know, it's not doing a great deal, but maybe it's a bigger ship with shields, yeah? And you've got a small thing like an eagle shooting at you. You'll see it flashing on your sensors. Just press your H key, you'll target that. Of course, if you've got you've got your cycle next ship as well, so if there's only two of them, then you'll, you'll select that anyway. Yeah? But you might as well just keep it at H and remember, press H if you want to select the highest threat. Um... Next fire group. That's a bit of a tough one again. Um, depending if you're using more than one fire group, you can you can basically get by in the game without using fire groups though. So, depending on what you're doing. If you're a pirate, you can't. Uh, if you're a bounty hunter, you probably need to have a kill warrant scanner and stuff set up to a different fire group as well. So, I'm, I'm going to leave that for now though. You can, you can work this one out for yourself. Uh, Firing deploys hard points, yeah, so you don't actually need a deploy hard point button regarding that. However, you've got to get rid of your hard points before you can jump into Super Cruise. So I just keep that at the default U key. Which brings me nicely to yeah, your cargo scoops, your home key, I believe. Jetson all cargo defaults to end. Which is quite funny, because if I was ever on the stage where I was doing that, I would just want to end the game, or myself, <laughs> right? Uh, landing gear G. Yeah, these are all defaults. I just keep them the way they are. Now, I do open Galaxy Map M. I'm not even sure if it defaults to that. It doesn't default to that, yeah, which is just crazy, yeah? You're opening the Galaxy Map so much that it really should be at M. Uh, pause is useless, unless you're doing tutorials. Right, so that looks like that now. Yeah, that's that. That is basically, I mean, that is so many controls covered there. Uh, about 35 minute video or so. There may be some better stuff out there or better ways for you to do it. If you can think of anything that I've missed, then, you know, let me know about it and, uh, and I'll try and cover it. I'll, I'll either annotate the video or you can just ask me in the, uh, just ask me in the, and, and you know, in, in the questions below, and uh, and I'll try and get back to you about that. So I hope this was informative. It's certainly pretty comprehensive. As I said, everything's practically covered there. I don't believe I've missed out anything. So hopefully, I will see you in the black.